Howdy, my name is John Watts with Watts Digital Imaging in San Diego, California. I'm a post-processing specialist for photographers. You take the perfect shot and I'll help you get the absolute most out of it, your printer or mine. And I can help you in three distinct ways. One is Photoshop instruction and services. Two is LightJet digital printing and finishing. And three is color management products and services. Well, as Gomer Powell used to say, surprise, surprise, surprise. And Shazam, was he ever the prognosticator. As you can see from the picture shown, or if you've updated your Creative Cloud apps in the last few days, Adobe has made radical changes to its Camera Raw plugins user interface. The new look is completely different. Look, I know, I know, I know. Change can be frustrating, and at first I was indeed skeptical. But this new user interface is starting to grow on me, and definitely in a positive way. There are lots of little things that ultimately make this a more efficient user interface compared to the old interface. And if you're one of my Photoshop students, here's more good news. Rest assured that these changes do not negate the philosophy of RAW in any way. Same functions and procedures, but with a different layout. So with a little bit of time and practice on your part, you'll be up and running again in no time. If you're not familiar with the philosophy of RAW, there's a link in the blog post that accompanies this video to find out more. Or if you're viewing this on YouTube, you'll find a link to the blog post in the video description or the QR code on the title screen. By the way, in the spirit of KISS, keep it super simple, I'm not covering any of the GWiz tools and functions such as selective color adjustment, radio filter, and so on. Because more than likely, you won't ever need them. I never use them. Besides, you can perform these functions in Photoshop with dramatically better results if you follow the post-processing goals of RAW to create a master file, both discussed with links in the blog post. So let's get right to it. I'm going to go ahead and open three files in Photoshop, which of course opens it in Adobe Camera Raw. Looks different, huh? <laughs> okay, let's start with the new user interface. The tools have been moved from the top of the workspace to the right side. If you follow the philosophy of RAW, you only need one tool, the edit tool, right there. To me, the other tools are GWiz functions. Remember, keep it super simple. There aren't any tabs as in the old user interface. They've been replaced with panels, and different panels are available depending on the tool that's been selected. Keep in mind that if you follow the four goals of RAW file enhancement, you will only need one tool, the edit tool, and four essential panels, which are shown. You can pretty much ignore the other functions. It's gee whiz stuff. So there are three critical functions that have had their names changed. Tabs are now panels, and here is a bunch of panels under the edit tool right here. The HSL tab in the old interface is now called the Color Mixer Panel. And the Lens Correction tab is now called the Optics Panel. Now, you can see that there's a film strip showing here. You can simply click this icon right here to hide or reveal the film strip. This is a handy feature if you're processing multiple RAW files. I definitely don't use it all of the time, preferring instead to see my image a bit larger in the workspace. As you can see here, when I toggle off the film strip, you can see how much bigger my image gets. So let's talk about some new features. Each panel has what's called a per panel preview icon. I'm going to call it the eyeball from here on out. If a panel is edited, like this basic panel is, then the eyeball is highlighted. If it is grayed out, like it is under the curves panel, then there are no edits in that panel. As you can see here, only three panels have been edited. The basic panel, the color mixer panel, and the optics panel. The eyeball shows and hides the effects of a chosen panel. Just click and hold to see before, or your default settings, and release to see the changes that you've made. And here's a feature I'm really glad to see down here. This is called the Toggle to Default Settings icon. Unlike the preview toggle in the old interface, this shows before and after views of all corrections made to your RAW file, not just for an individual panel. This is a big improvement. Watch this. Click it once. You can see my default settings. I'll click it again. You can see all the changes that I've made to this image. You can also notice when I do that that when I click the before view, all of these eyeballs will gray out. Here's before, or default, and here's after with the changes. So now let's talk about the new color mixer. Now I'm going to click on this little side-facing arrow to open the color mixer panel. 
Now, in a lot of ways, this is just like the old HSL tab of the Slick Edition. There's now a drop-down menu called Adjust, which gives you the choice of either HSL or Color Mode. And just so you know, you'll get the same results regardless of which mode you choose. If you choose HSL, this works exactly like the old interface with separate tabs for U, Saturation, and Luminance with the eight colors in each tab. Think of it this way, choose which tab you need first, use saturation or luminance, then adjust your particular colors within that tab. If you choose instead color, the HSL controls are conveniently grouped together in whatever color you've chosen. This is really handy if you only need to adjust the HSL of a particular color. Think of it this way, choose the color first, then adjust the HSL for that color only, all in one convenient place. Now here's another new feature that I think you'll really like. It's definitely a major improvement from previous versions. Like the old interface, the zoom tool is the default cursor that shows up in your image. You can see it right up here. But now if you click on your image, your image will enlarge to 100%, which is really cool. Click it again and it returns to fit to view. I like that. Let's talk about a couple of procedural things. The first time you open this new version of RAW, you're going to see an initial splash screen. This only shows up the first time you start the program. It's a one-time setup. It's not permanent. It's easily changeable in the Show to Hide Film Strip Options icon, which we discussed earlier, and as you can see, is right down here. You can also access the Settings menu right here. If necessary, you can click on this gear icon in the upper right to get to it. But I'd recommend leaving everything at the default settings. If you need to change your workflow options, also available in this settings menu, I instead would simply click right here in your workspace and up pop your workflow options. Now, I've already had it set at full screen mode, but up here in the top right portion of your workspace, you see a double sided arrow. You click on this to expand your workspace and you can click it again to reduce it. Now, I like having it expanded because I don't like having all this nonsense showing in the background. Here, I'm focused solely on the Adobe Camera Raw workspace. And you've already seen me do this, but let me point it out again. You have these arrows by each panel on the upper left corner of each panel. This will expand and collapse your panels. And you can see the way I have it set up that if I open one panel, all the others will close. So if I open Color Mixer, the Edit panel closes and only the Color Mixer panel opens. You have a choice of your panel behavior up here in the Settings menu under General. You can edit the panel behavior if you want. I've chosen Single Default, which means only one Edit panel will be open at a time. Feel free to explore these other options. I just like the clean look of having only one panel open at a time, but it's your choice. Now, of course, what I've discussed today is far from complete. There's a lot of interesting features in this new interface, but this will definitely get you up and working in no time. Remember, keep it super simple and go from there. If you have any questions, please contact me. Sign up for my newsletter if you haven't. Thanks a lot, and God bless.